So what's up guys? So this video is A, going to be a little more commentary than analytics, and B, probably divisive and going to piss some people off. But then again, this is Red Peg and Corner, so when don't I do that? Um, cancel culture. No, 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 don't turn away. Um, this is a situation that is quite divisive and quite a complicated issue, <laughs> to say the least, to talk about as a Marxist and within the Marxist community and within the trans community. And that's partially where I'm going to be going with this today. And I can already hear the trans people already now uh, typing away or clicking off. Please stay. You might learn something. Or you might just get pissed off. I don't give a shit. This video is going to talk about this and I'm going to give a couple examples kind of mixed in so essentially what I'm getting at is that when I'm talking about cancel culture I'm talking about the societal norm it seems like that it's become to essentially try to discredit certain people and try to make them out to be the bad guy make them out to you know, be something that they're not simply based on certain misunderstandings or mistype or because somebody t misinterpreted something the wrong way. It's the internet. I understand. I get it. And people are stupid. But I didn't know... I've been doing this shit since, what, twenty. 12, 11, technically I've been doing it earlier than that when you consider some of the other bullshit that I used to do. Um, but the point is, I've been doing YouTube a long time, and I've been talking about subject matter like like Marxism and trans issues and stuff like that. I've been talking about a lot of this over the years for some time. So, getting back on point... I understand that the internet is a, a cesspool, and certain social media sites like Twitter are more of a cesspool than others. Um, but n nonetheless, it's a it's a teeming you know tide water of freaking various different groups of people, from your fascists to your shit libs to your Marxists, your anarchists, and just your shit you know shit posters and edge lords. I get it. It's the it's the internet. It's a it, it it you get what you come for, you know. But in all the time that I've been doing this, I knew that we were stupid. I just didn't know that people were X Games level stupid. And here's what I'm talking about: the people that are trying to cause trouble. Like I get it. There's certain aspects of cancel culture that need need to be addressed. Certain people need to be cancelled. Matt Walsh needs to be cancelled. J.K. Rowling needs to be cancelled. Donald Trump needs to be cancelled. You know, various problematic people need to be cancelled. People like Stacey K., the comedian from Kansas City, or Finster, the femboy from England, do not need to be cancelled. Jason Unruh, the Marxist commentator, does not need to be cancelled. I'm going to address each of these issues individually, but like I was saying a minute ago, the issue with cancel culture, and especially within a lot of liberal communities of, you know, the internet, particularly within the trans community, has this idea that just because somebody said something, you know, that they took the wrong way or that they interpreted 
a certain way that all of a sudden, oh, well, that person needs to be canceled. No, they don't. And so, and if you actually sit back, analyze what you just read, and actually, you know, you know, have some rational thought, maybe you would understand. I understand it takes an understanding of context, but still. It's the whole point is, is that so many people are just quick to just jump to conclusions and blow things out of proportion. And then those same people are the ones that also are denying cancel culture exists. Well, there's no cancel culture. That's cringe shit. Don't talk about that. Why? Because it is because it directly hurts you and your image because you are directly involved in it and you are contributing to it. I shouldn't talk about it. It doesn't exist. It's cringe shit. No, I'm not that type of person to just sit back, shut up and just go with the crowd. I'm the type of person that's going to tell it how it is because I'm a realist and well, just also a bitch. But the point being, um, it is that these are the people that are actually out there trying to deny that it exists while actually while directly contributing to the bullshit. And in the case of Stacy K, who simply posted a tweet, or at least a tweet thread, I think it was a couple of tweets, in which she was basically stating that when it comes to the issue of passing in the trans community, one, it's a bitch. And I can say that as somebody who struggles with passing. And at this point, I've kind of given up and just don't give a shit about passing because I live in Portland, so I understand this comes with a level of privilege. Um, <laughs> but it's also one of those things where it's like, I just have kind of gotten to this point in my life, I just don't care enough to, I'm lazy and I'm, I just, and half the time I'm depressed. So I don't really have time to really throw myself together. Like I'll obviously shave, you know, I've got five o'clock shadow. I admit that haters, you know, um, you know, I'm, but I do a lot of things to try to at least present the way that I present. And I will present even on days when I'm sporting full-on scruff. I really don't care. But the point that I'm trying to make, and the point that Stacy was trying to make, is that passing is a bitch. And, it, and more to the point, what she said, is that at its core, the concept of passing is a social construct placed on trans women and trans people in general by the cishet, you know, the in the ruling class largely, but, you know, the cishets. The cisgender heteronormative people that were born AMAB and AFAB identify as AMAB and AFAB and are perfectly okay with it. Good for y'all. But they place these, but these same people are the ones that already place impossible and sometimes just outright misogynistic and sexist beauty standards on regular women, much less when it comes down to trans women. And that's the whole, was the whole point of Stacy's tweet was that it is, you know, it is extremely hard to pass and, you know, and, and live up to these beauty standards that these people put on us. And frankly, it is a, you know, the concept of passing is a sexist, misogynistic, and frankly, transphobic social construct. That was all she was basically trying to say. And she's not wrong. It should not be a controversial subject to state that. But yet people were jumping on her because of that, and dogpiling her, and when I actually called these people out on their bullshit, and was calling them out on cancel culture, they were basically trying to say, you know, trying to beat around the bush and say that cancel culture doesn't exist, and that, yeah, basically that, 
you know, I sound like a right winger and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, okay, that doesn't take away the fact that it's not something that you're doing. You are literally engaging in cancel culture. You are trying to discredit somebody for literally no fucking reason at all just because you decided to become an, be, be offended by something. Like, I'm sorry, but sometimes the... Again, I don't mean to sound like a right-winger, but when it comes down to it, sometimes I think the trans community needs to suck it up just a little bit. The liberal community of the internet needs to suck it up just a little bit. Because this pointless bullshit of canceling people because you don't necessarily see something a certain way and then getting pissed off at people like myself who then call you out on your bullshit and then and because they don't agree with you and then your your logical thing reaction is to call those people transphobic or you know what is it the um internalized transphobia oh you're massage being misogynistic you know you know or just in outright calling me an idiot um that's fine you're entitled to your wrong opinion you know and uh and uh, it's funny engaging with these people because then they just end up blocking you anyway so whatever but that's the problem that i i face every day and frankly it's getting worse and worse anymore with these people just a few weeks ago a british femboy finster who identifies as cisgender he him but dresses in um women's attire when doing uh twitch streaming and gaming and stuff like that there's no shame in that there's no harm in that and he's garnered a pretty considerable following, especially within the trans community. But then all of a sudden, now about a few weeks ago, it suddenly became an issue for certain trans people because, who were basically trying to accuse him of profiting off of, of you know, you know, trans people and basically doing this and that. Yeah, he's a Twitch streamer, and you didn't get pissed off about that before. You know, the dude is literally just trying to make a living. Now, granted, I don't particularly care for t Twitch streamers. And I think that there's a lot more productive things you could be doing with your time. And definitely a lot more productive things that you could be doing to earn money. But hey, we all got to earn a living somehow. That's why some people do OnlyFans. Speaking of which, not to knock the sex workers, but a lot of these people that get pissed off at Finster are also OnlyFans uh, members, sex workers, and some of them even streamers, <laughs> and yet you're getting pissed off at them over this thing, and that you're basically trying to say, oh, well, you know, he's trans, you know, transphobic, he's got transphobic people in his, you know, as his mods and his admins and blah, blah, blah. Every stupid little thing that they could come up with that they could pull out of their ass, like their, like their arguments kept getting more desperate and more stupid as it went on. And the more that you call them out on their, their bullshit, the more they just break down and just block you because you're not believing them. So, and the, Funny, and I only bring this up because it was a very small section of the trans community, but still nonetheless was a group of people I needed to address because these same group of people like to get offended um, because of some crap that a person says or does. Finster has been doing this for a long time and has garnered a considerable following, again, within the trans community especially. And still has quite a considerable following, especially within the trans community. And then a couple of, you know, people had to come along and had to basically start shitting on everyone's parade because they woke up and chose violence, I guess. Um, or stupidity is probably a better 
word to describe what they woke up and chose. Um, and these are the, the and all of these people I've been describing throughout the course of this video are what are the Zoe Baker types that I often talk about on Twitter. And I bring up that because of the situation with Jason Unruh about, oh, what was it, a year or two ago? In which people were literally dogpiling Jason, and largely a lot of them Anarch Kitties um, and other shit libs and Ultroids, who basically um, were fans of Zoe Baker, the trans activist and... Um, philosopher, which I use that term loosely, not a, she's definitely not a political analyst, I can give you that one, um, and she definitely doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about half the time, um, but you know what, I'll save my attacks and critique of Zoe Baker for another video. Uh, the point is, is that she and her stands often, um, do the same thing that a lot of these people that get angry um, at Stacey K and Finster and the people that defend them uh, because they don't see things that their way. And then when you basically don't see things their way and you are arguing with them, debating with them, their first reaction is to call you things like a transphobe and a misogynist and you know, all kinds of stupid shit. The people that, you know, want to label somebody as basically saying, oh, they're being transphobic, oh, they're being misogynistic, they're being this, they're being that, when maybe it's just the fact that you misinterpreted the entire equation, the entire conversation, the entire context of what was said. And again, that brings me back to that. I know context is hard, especially when you're just reading, well, text. But it's one of those things, it's like, this is one of the reasons why when I read things, specifically tweets, and I know it sounds dumb, but I actually reread things, like, a couple of times, so that I can grasp what, what is actually being said. Because, I'm not going to lie, at first when I, you know, read, you know, what was being said by Stacy, I was kind of like, huh? And it took me a minute to get it. I wasn't offended, but I was kind of confused by what was going on. And largely because I was finding out about this whole brouhaha after the fact, and that was why I was reading the tweet to begin with. And maybe that's just me and my autistic brain, um, but <laughs> I have to, and maybe a little bit of OCD, uh, but I have to read that in order to visualize it, to grasp it, to actually analyze, process, and understand the context of what is being said. And I understand I'm a, probably a lone wolf in that, because not a lot of people want to do that um in fact most people just their first reaction is just to go row and get pissed off and offended and stuff like that and you know what <laughs> again at the risk of sounding like a right winger you're really only making the the far right the conservative factions pr you're just proving them right you're just basically making us look like the petty, sensitive little snowflakes that they claim that we are. And sometimes it might just benefit people to just take a chill pill, relax, read things over a couple of times before getting all bent out of shape over something. And then before you go to type something, maybe consider the, th uh, the words of Craig Ferguson. Does this need to be said? Does this need to be said by me? And does this need to be said by me right now? If the answer to at least one of those is not yes, and then you really don't need to say it. 
unless it is a solid yes to all three questions, maybe just shut the fuck up. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. I'll see you in the next one. God, the comments are going to be wonderful to see on this video.